Mary said, Mary, Mary, the mother of God, said, My spirit rejoiceth in God, and my soul doth magnify him. Why does it magnify? Because your soul is the fecundator. It's where the seed is planted from the conscious mind, which is going to take shape and form and grow like a child in a womb in that subconscious mind and become part of your being. Okay? You sow a thought, you reap an act. This is Emerson, by the way. You sow an act, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you reap a character. You sow a character, you reap your destiny. It's all connected, isn't it? So what are we sowing in that subconscious constantly, this moon, that can produce addictions, for example, food addictions. Notice I have that up there. Is food addictive? When you get a little bit uncomfortable and unhappy and moody and things aren't working right, depression, let's go to the refrigerator and get something to eat. Would moon square Jupiter cause that? I have moon square Jupiter, yeah, and it's on a grand cross. And I've, uh, I, you know, the thing was, I have Venus and Jupiter both, and Neptune all affecting my Jupiter. Now, what happens with, Jupiter's not always that bad, okay? Uh, Jupiter's wisdom also. Wisdom that comes from the cross, okay? Jupiter also resurrected off the cross. Oh, that's how Jesus rep represented that, okay? That whole spirit of resurrection is Jupiter. We learn a lot with Jupiter on the cross. I went to prison for nine years. I have Jupiter in Pisces in addition to the sun in the 12. Okay, for nine years in prison. But I turned that into a positive learning growth experience. Went through hell to get there, okay? Um, but, so, Jupiter's extremes, okay? Whenever it's afflicting, it can produce extreme emotions, okay? Um, it can be over-optimism, for example. I've been like that all my life. I'm very, I teach optimism, but I'm over optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, especially when you have Jupiter afflicting Venus. Come on in. I didn't know we had somebody else coming. Uh, oh, great. Our uh, Turkish friend. Uh, <laughs> she was a student years ago with me. And we stayed in touch. She's a beautiful lady. <laughs> Still with me, Karen, huh? Hi. <laughs> I gotta look at this now, this camera over here. Hi. Hi, Peter. <laughs> um, everything visible from here? Perfect. Oh, good, good. Absolutely okay. perfect. Hi, Peter. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm glad you came. Thanks for coming. So we have uh, Karen uh, also uh, from Newfoundland on, online with us uh, sharing the course. Okay. She's, uh, she's Skyping with us right now. And um, so, Lenny, you want to make the introductions to everybody here? Huh? Lauren? Oh, Don't yes. everybody let her know who we are. This is our dear friend and student, um, Peter Higgins. Nice meeting you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, I just passed the exit. <laughs> We're just getting started. Just you, continue. You've been, you've been through my classes, so yeah. you're not going to miss much. Yeah. So. So basically, um, when we talk about the sun, we were talking, we just started basically, sun dealing with ego needs. Uh, the sun is your spirit. The sun is uh, in a man, in a, in a person's charge is also the father, but it's a loving father as opposed to Saturn, which is the disciplined father. And then we're into the moon a little bit, and the feelings that touch the subconscious mind. The sun is your conscious, willful mind. And its job is to protect the subconscious from defilement and from pollution, if you would. Um, it's uh, meant to protect and defend uh, the impregnation of the feminine receptive subconscious mind because once it's seen and seeded, it's going to grow into experience in your life. So every time we put a seed in that subconscious mind and we repeat it enough, it grows into an experience. And I can explain it this way. Every time you say and repeat over and over to your friends or to yourself, I'm sick and tired of this, you have just planted a seed of illness and sickness in your own life. That subconscious mind doesn't discriminate, doesn't take a joke. It doesn't know the difference between what you're saying, what it's true or what. It doesn't rationalize like the conscious mind does all that. Subconscious mind is pure receptivity. It's like a good woman who believes all things, trusts all things, until it's screwed over, excuse me for that, but it's, 
it's a very trusting part of our being, okay? And we gotta recognize it as the soul, the subconscious, okay? So every time you say he breaks my heart, you set yourself up for heart problems. Every time you say he's a pain in the ass, you set yourself up for hemorrhoids. Every time that's right, everything you say is part of your being. If I hypnotize one of you and I put you in a trance up here, and I tell you I'm going to burn you with fire and I go get an ice cube out of the refrigerator and come back and touch your arm with it, you'll get a blister on your arm, just like a burn. But I didn't touch you with fire, but the body, the subconscious believed it so much that it manifests the symptom in the body. So you, that's why I emphasize and I tell my students, you have to learn to be a metaphysician. You have to understand all these mysteries to help someone. You can't just sit there and read their chart and tell them that, uh, you know, oh, I see you had a rough life and it's going to get worse because you've got this cross doing this and Sam's coming over here. And now you can leave and you'd be walking in fear for the rest of your life because you came to me. I mean, you know, what's that going to do for anybody? So your job is not only to see and to guide and to counsel, but it's to show them a way out, okay? And the highest way out is to teach them a right response in life. And what are the responses you have in life? You can be accusatory, negative, finding fault with yourself, that's called guilt. And others, it's all the same spirit of accusing, finding fault, accusation, right? Or you can be filled with praise and thanksgiving. Or you can be apathetic and not give it. I've been those, I've been to those places in my life. I spent years hating, fighting, finding other people to blame. Psychologists would help me. Ron, let's find out why you're here. What's your problem? What made you this way? Oh, it must be your parents. Oh, good, I can blame it on them. Must be your broken home. Your mother married nine times. I mean, you can find a lot of reasons. Why are you so screwed up? It's not you, Ron. It's not your fault. Then one day, I come to a place where I don't care anymore. I can't beat them. I'm not going to join them. I'm inside prison. I say, the hell with it. I don't care to live. I try suicide a few times. It doesn't work. Obviously, I'm still here. But I get to a point where I have given, totally given up. And then finally, I learned in the latter years of my prison, I learned the mystery and the power of praise. And I began to praise and give thanks and trust in good. So what I'm saying to you is that your job as an astrologer and a counselor is to change people's response to life. Because their life's not going to change until they change their response. If they're, if they're walking around guilty all the time, filled with accusations, self-accusing, you know, in Scripture, that's called the devil. He's called Satan, the devil, the serpent, the dragon. It's called the accuser of our brother, and he who accused our brother before God both day and night. Very opposite of loving Jesus, Jupiter, okay? Which is faith and love and, you know, forgiveness. But Saturn doesn't forgive. So when you're doing a chart and you see Saturn reflections, what are you seeing? Somebody that holds on to the past, lives in the past. Remember what Christ said to Peter? Peter was symbolic of what? Saturn, Satan, the devil. He called him, get behind me. He said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. He said, Peter, well, read my book. You'll know what that's about, okay? Peter was, Peter was the accuser. He was the cursing disciple, by the way. Peter was in the Bible. So if you brought up in that faith, you'd understand all that. But point being, you know, Peter said, I'm not worthy to be crucified as my Savior. Crucified me upside down. He was the, the self-judgmental, not only accusing others, but himself. I'm not worth it. That's Saturn talking. So when you see Saturn afflictions in a chart, it's somebody that's living in the past a lot. Okay, like Christ says, get behind me, Satan. When they, an interesting scripture, when they confronted Christ and they said, how do you speak of Moses and the prophets? You're not, but you're not even 30 years old. How can you speak of Moses and the prophets? He said something that is so amazing, so profound, but most people read it and don't get it. He didn't say, I am, I was, and I will be. He said, I am, and I am, and I am. Because he's the eternal presence. He's the eternal now. The only way you're in the presence of God is being in the present now. What makes you a good student in this room right now is that you're in this moment, if you're with me. If you're thinking about, you gotta go pick up some bread later, you gotta, oh my God, my child, I got this, I got that on my mind. You're not here, you know? And you can't learn anything because you're, you're not in the presence. You see what I'm saying? So what's a dyslexia, or what's a, what do they call students today that have attention deficit disorders? Why, they've never been taught to meditate, to reflect, to go within and focus and concentrate. Let's watch TV all your life. 
Let's see if you got any attention deficit problems. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. You got it, huh? So, you know, we, we need to change people's minds as well as their hearts. Do you hear what I'm saying? As a good counselor, okay? It's not all about, you know, how accurate can you be. Where there's prophecies, it's a fail. Scriptures even said that. Prophecies, they'll fail. Love will never fail, okay? I tell my students, I don't care how much you know. No one gives a sh excuse my language. No one cares. They don't really. All they care is how much you care. That's what they care about. More than anything. That, they don't care how much you know. They, know, they care how much you care. And that's what people are about. Because we all want to be loved and embraced. Is that not true? Think about it. You know? And some of us have more problems with that. You know why? Because we don't love ourselves. And if you don't love yourself, it's hard to let someone else love you, isn't it? It's kind of hard. So your, part of your job as a, as a counselor and astrologer is to, is to counsel people to love themselves, to get to know themselves in a more positive way. Okay? Okay. I mean, it's awful when you do a chart and you come up with all these aspects and these crosses and everything, and the person goes away and says, geez, am I screwed up. You know what I mean? You know? There's no hope for me. I say there is hope. We're going to change all that. Is the sun the, um, the mental and then the moon the emotional? Good. And the next one's the physical? I would say Mercury's mental more than anything. You know the word, the ancient name for Mercury was thought. T-H-O-T-H. That's the, the mythological. I didn't know that. Yeah. So where we get our word thought from? Okay, from Mercury? that. Mercury? Yeah, so Mercury. That's who it is. Mercury. Messenger, the messenger of God. And if you look at the throne of God, the throne of God has the sun and moon together. That's Leo and Cancer, right? They're next to each other, right? And then if you put the signs next to those going out, what do you have? Mercury rules Virgo and what? Gemini. And so that's the messenger. He's going to be next to the throne because he's got to carry the messages out. That's his job. And outside of that is what? Venus, Aries, no, excuse me, Taurus and uh, Libra. Then go out one more time, and what do you have? So, so somebody's got to protect that beautiful Mars. Venus. Mars. Mars. Oh, Mars. Mars, right. Aries and Scorpio. Now let's go out one more time. We've got to have some Jupiter. Jupiter's the preserver. Did you know that Jupiter, the actual Jupiter in the heavens, protects the Earth from bombardments? If it wasn't that massive Jupiter out there, our Earth would be pummeled with all sorts of asteroids and things coming in all the time. So. Jupiter is literally the preserver, as it is in all scriptures, Jesus the preserver. In Hinduism, you know, Krishna is the preserver. Shiva is the destroyer. All the religions have the same myths, same story, okay? So, we go out one more after Jupiter, what do we have in there? Okay, good. Saturn ruled in the ancient days Capricorn and what? I mean, excuse me, Capricorn and Aquarius. Okay, so we're... Who was cast out the outermost parts of heaven in the Bible? Satan. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it's all in astrology. People don't even know that. Who was cast out of what? Satan. Satan was oh, cast out of heaven. Oh, I see. You know, he's the outermost parts. He's the least sets the limits of it all. He's outside. All making sense? These are all coincidences. Just coincidences. The Christians would have a hard time with them. Okay. So, okay, let's keep moving. I try to say on, uh, on sun, conscious mind, will. Purpose and life force, son as loving father, son as the heart, the back, the courage. If you have someone with a lot of afflictions to the son, you can generally see likely good likelihood there's gonna be back problems in that area, okay? Because that can produce that very easily, because the back is the is the sun. Um, especially if it's a Saturn affliction, the skeletal frame, right? Mars is the muscular frame. You see it? So when you're looking at a chart, you're gonna see these many layers of interpretation. Okay, so feel free to, if you have questions. Closest pro, uh, aspect, aspect being planted to the sun, the strongest area of need for praise. We talked about that a little bit. We'll do it more later. Uh, I'll take you on a course. I'll show you exactly how that works. We'll do a whole thing on this path, on the sun and the aspects. Okay, Venus, our need for love, affection, union, harmony, and peace. Venus is sweet, ability to receive or give affection. It's artistic expression and relationship, business and personal in general, okay? Now, when we talk about relationships, it's not always a relationship and a love affair or something like that. It can be a business relationship, okay? And notice it says sweets. 
okay? It's amazing how we give the person we love chocolates. Think about this. Why do we use chocolates to show our endearment to affection to another person? Venus rules all this, okay? The sweets, the love, the affection, the attention. Um, I have Jupiter on a grand cross. Now, you were talking to me about Jupiter the other day, just a little while ago, about the sun and Jupiter. But Jupiter and Venus, okay, can be excessive. Remember, Jupiter is positive, but it's also, you know, it's, it's great, it's optimism, but it's successes as well, okay? Um, so whatever you see it afflicted, it can produce that. So I have Venus Jupiter afflicted. That means I have an excessive love of sweets. I definitely love sweets. <laughs> you know, it can produce a problem. What, what do you think it can produce? Diabetes. Diabetes. Oh, good. And what is diabetes a fit? What? What, else? what part of the body? What, what gives up first on, on, uh, when you have uh, diabetes? Kid, kidneys. Um, yeah, the kidneys fail, right? What part of the body is ruled by Libra? Kidneys. Kidneys. I thought kidneys were Jupiter. No, kidneys are the, this area here, which is um, Venus ruled, Libra. Yeah. Anyway, the whole point is that they all connected. As you get into astrology, you get into medical astrology, you'll see more and more connections like this. Um, so, okay, the kidneys and the rain, okay, it says. Uh, um, okay, so, Mars is drive, your anger, your fear, your courage, it's an aggression, it can be anger, it can be conscious, willful passion, and drive, surgery, scars, okay, violence, those are awful negative things, but it's also very positive, it can be the force, the drive, the, you know, it's like you have a child that's a very unruly child, and he's very, he's, he's, he's fighting all the time, he's from, and then you say, oh, that's bad. He's a bad kid, that's bad. He's got Mars doing this, that. But he grows up and he overthrows the dictator, and then what do you say? Oh, what a great kid. And he say, here, oh, he's, you know, he saved everybody's life, you know? Okay. Yeah, no, it's all the use of the energies. It's not about finding it all bad or good. You know, all things work together for good for them to love God. I live that, and I believe that, I trust in that. That's my faith in my faith, okay? That's the highest faith there is. Let the fruit of thy lips be sacrificed to praise. And in all things give thanksgiving. In everything, even the seemingly bad things. Okay? Why? Because it's all working together for your highest good. But it's your faith that makes it right. Your faith in what? In good. What is good? What is God's good, right? My God, it's so easy, right? So have faith in good. But then you're over optimistic, right? Huh? Back in the days of the hate Ashbury acid-dropping period in the 60s, they had a hard diagnosis with the hospitals because they were getting people that were coming into the hospitals with a new diagnosis they didn't ever see before. And, uh, and uh, because they, these kids were dropping LSD, okay? And guess what the diagnosis was? Positive paranoia. <laughs> so they were glad everybody was coming after them? No. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, actually. That's good, that's good. Well, basically, the all things in the, so the grand conspiracy for their good, not for their bad. Oh, the, the world's in a conspiracy. Oh, they're seeing that yeah. See, I, I don't usually talk about drugs in here because I get people upset, you know. They're, they're real, they're, but the early Christians, and no one wants you to know this, were mushroom cultists. That's why they were persecuted by the Romans. That offends a lot of people, especially if they're in fundamental thinking. But I could show it to you and prove it to you, scripturally. I can absolutely show it to you. They, they partook of an ancient mushroom called Ammonium muscarium. And uh, uh, that's why they dropped out, like the 60s. Everybody dropped out, lived communally, to stop and love everybody, right? <laughs> Same thing, right? Okay. And uh, the, Romans, the Romans didn't like it. They were scourge on their society that was based upon what? Taxes. <laughs> yeah, taxes, buy more, spend more, and let's stop dropping out and, and getting out of the system. You've got to be part of the system. So I don't want to go there too heavy, but someday if you ever want, I'll show you more and improve it to you. Um, if you don't, maybe 